You can see by the people piling in on us with ADM, with uh, Chevron and the other others, the other others. So who are these others that Pat teases us with? Previously, I made a series of videos exploring the possibilities for a future collaboration between Jivo and Shell. Now, the fact that Jivo's pipeline of contract negotiations continues to grow due to an increasing demand for SAF, I will, in this video, look for clues as to which airlines that may be negotiating with Jivo. There's certain of the airlines, and I, w I can't name them, I would, you know, because I can't, I can't name them. There's a subset of airlines who are thinking big and want to get there. They're totally serious and they are good players. You know, they, they want to go see this happen and they would be customers. Jeeva has already signed off-take agreements with two airlines, Delta and SAS, but there are likely to be more. There's a subset of airlines who are thinking big and want to get there. They're totally serious and they would be customers. In this video, I will focus on two airlines that can be considered totally serious. And one of them is Air Canada. But let's start with the airline that has really set the bar high. United Airlines, which intends to lead the industry switch to SAF and is committed to being 100% carbon free by 2050. This year they won the Air Transport World's Echo Airline of the Year award. Let's hear what their CEO Scott Kirby has to say about United Airlines' green ambitions. I'm coming to you today from the Colorado Rockies which is a great backdrop for talking to you about United's new commitment to be 100% green by the year 2050. And when we talk about being carbon free, we mean something different than what you've heard a lot of other companies say. And so the only way to really solve the climate change problem is through sustainable fuels and carbon sequestration. Recently, United made history by completing the first commercial flight using 100% SAF. Since the fuel on board is not traditional jet fuel, this is what's called sustainable aviation fuel processed from sugar and corn. It is powering this United Airlines 737 in one of its two engines, a first for a flight carrying passengers. There's simply no battery technology, even theoretical technology, that has enough energy density that you could put enough batteries on the airplane to get an airplane this big with this many people flying this far. And so, what works in a lot of other transportation industries won't work for aviation. This airplane, this engine, will be the first flight in history running on 100% sustainable aviation fuel. So United has already committed to purchasing two times more SAF than the rest of the world publicly announced SAF commitments combined. The question is, does this mean like, oh we're good already, we purchased twice as much as the other airlines, or should this be considered more of a long term commitment, because in that case, they will most likely need to purchase even more SAF in the future. If you go to ikea.org, you find official statistics on which airlines currently have SAF agreements and with which producers. And based on total offtake volume, United is ranked as number one. So far, the total volume is 9 billion liters, which is about 2.4 billion gallons. But at a closer look, you find that their first agreement with World Energy expired back in 2016. And the other agreement with World Energy expired this year. And this agreement with Fulcrum is only valid until 2025, the same year that Jiva will start up its production. Their most recent deal is with all their fuels and extends over 20 years. This deal is a joint venture with Honeywell. And as part of the agreement, United is committing to purchase 1.5 billion gallons of SAF from Alder, which makes this the largest publicly announced SAF agreement yet. So thus far, United has only purchased SAF from US-based producers. So, is there any previous connections between United Airlines and Jeevo? As a matter of fact, there are some. In 2017, United was one of eight airlines flying on green jet fuel produced by Jeevo at Chicago O'Hare's event Fly Green Day. 
and in 2019, Jivo signed an MOU with a group of airlines and fuel producers to work cooperatively on expanding the use of SAF at San Francisco International Airport. United was one of the airlines that signed this MOU. It's also worth noticing that both Chevron and Shell took part in this. Jivo has also tweeted tributes to United Airlines for their progress towards a greener aviation industry. Now let's move on to Air Canada, and I will show you why I think there's a possible chance they may be negotiating with Jivo. You have Canada, which is uh, going to be important in our business, I think, and uh, because they have an LCFS policy in place now that we can actually figure out what it means and monetize things. So that that all all that stuff is really really good for business. In March of 2021, Air Canada announced they would invest $50 million in sustainable aviation fuel. And one of the reasons this has caught my attention is because of this guy. This is Frank Femia, the manager for fuel operations at Air Canada. And he often likes Jeevo's posts on LinkedIn, and especially when they regard Jeevo's SAF deals. If you go to his profile, you see that he specializes in contract negotiations, procurement, and supply chain management. Frank has a long career at Air Canada, and since 2015, he manages fuel operations. Among his set of skills, you find procurement endorsed by 46 people. And if you're not familiar with the term procurement, here's the Wikipedia explanation. Considering his role here, you might assume that when Air Canada negotiates a fuel supply agreement, Frank Famia will most likely be sitting at that table. Thus far, Air Canada has not announced any SAF offtake agreement, but they have officialized the aiming to be 100% net zero by 2050. For all of us at Air Canada, operating sustainably is something we are very proud of and determined to do. We aim to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions throughout our global operations by 2050. We're investing $50 million by 2030 in sustainable aviation fuels and carbon reduction and removal technology. Hmm, $50 million investments in SAF? It doesn't seem that much actually, especially compared to United. So the question is, when they say invest in SAF, do they mean something other than purchasing SAF? The official press release says they will invest $50 million in SAF and other low carbon fuels development, evaluate the practical applications of renewable energy sources, such as biogas and renewable electricity and energy transition measures. Hmm, sounds like a net zero plant. Hmm. Well, I mean, $50 million, it seems like a modest sum in this context. But what if the $50 million is a stake in a much larger deal? For example, a joint venture. In October 2021, Air Canada joined the non-profit organization Aviation Climate Task Force as one of the founding members, and the task force is made up by 10 global airlines. According to their website, ACT is a global coalition of leaders in the aviation sector seeking to accelerate breakthroughs in emerging technologies required to help the industry achieve net zero emissions. And these are the 10 global airlines. There's a, There's a subset, subset of airlines, of airlines who, are who are thinking big, big and want to get there. They're totally, totally serious, serious and, and they are, they good, are players. good players. Now let's compare this list with Jivo's business references. You have Delta, an official Jivo customer, Cathay Pacific, Lufthansa, United. And I would also like to highlight Virgin Australia. And the reason for that is that they recently announced a new partnership with United. And this will replace their previous partnership with Delta. So, interesting connection. ACT will allocate its resources and focus on various emerging technologies by advocating and aggressively pursuing a portfolio strategy approach for aviation decarbonization. 20% of ACT's resource deployment will focus on short-term solutions such as emerging and existing SAF production pathways and production scale-up. Now, this is pure speculation, but let's assume that ACT, as part of their short-term solutions, would jointly invest in one of Jivo's net zero plans to scale up SAF production. If they would pool their resources, the modest sum of $50 million that Air Canada has set aside to invest in SAF development makes perfect sense. 
but I'm just speculating. The only thing we know right now is that a subset of airlines are interested in becoming GEVO customers and that they are totally serious about achieving net zero emissions by 2050. United and Air Canada fits the description, but so do several other airlines. So we'll just have to wait and see which airlines will eventually seal the deal with GEVO. Which airlines do you think GEVO is negotiating with? Share your thoughts on this in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button. And if you're thirsty for more GEVO related due diligence, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I make these videos just to inform and entertain, and you should not consider them as any kind of financial advice. That's all I have for now. Until next time, bye bye.